Lutheran, Reformed, Methodist, and Baptist. What's the difference? Let's begin with their origins. Lutheranism begins with Martin Luther. No, not that guy. This guy. A Catholic priest who, as the story goes, nailed a list of complaints about the Catholic Church to the door of the Castle Church in Wittenberg, Germany in the year 1517. Those who followed Luther's teaching eventually would have their own churches, and in many cases, Catholic churches were turned into Lutheran churches. Lutheran churches became the government-approved state churches in many German states, and also in other countries like Norway and Sweden. Lutheran denominations in America today often began with immigrants from places with Lutheran states. State churches. Reformed churches have a similar story. Frenchman John Calvin was a theologian and reformer who fled to Geneva in 1536 in what is today Switzerland. Those influenced by his philosophy started churches that were sometimes called Calvinist, but often today are referred to as Reformed churches. Germany had Reformed churches too, and they became widespread in Switzerland and the Netherlands. People emigrating from the Netherlands started Dutch Reformed churches in America. Calvin's Reformed theology was adopted by John Knox, who was influential in promoting it in Scotland. The Church of Scotland, too, would eventually adopt Calvinist theology, though with a different set of confessional documents. Their brand of Reformed theology was called Presbyterianism. Sometimes Presbyterians are separated out from Reformed, but in this video, we'll treat them as synonymous. Methodist was the name attached to John and Charles Wesley, and others like George Whitfield, who had a particular brand of theology. These were Anglicans, that is, they were a part of the Church of England. The movement began in the mid-1700s. John Wesley taught a revivalist and holiness-focused theology, including the importance of a personal salvation experience, and mainstream Anglicanism didn't accept it. Methodists were just a movement within Anglicanism originally, but after Wesley died, there eventually was a formal schism. When Wesley and Whitfield went to America, their meetings often made Methodists out of other denominations who had never been Anglican. The history of Baptists is the most controversial. What we do know is that the name Baptist wasn't used by churches as a self-description until the early 1600s. What is considered by many to be the first self-labeled Baptist church is one began by John Smith. He had been an Anglican in England, but moved to Holland and was influenced by Anabaptist beliefs. Baptists gained a foothold in England with the Calvinistic type, particular Baptists, arising separately by the influence of Henry Jacob, who is classified among a short-lived movement called Independence. From England, Baptists spread to America. Some Baptists also claim earlier groups in church history History like Waldenses as representing the same set of core beliefs, but having churches under different names. Now, let's talk about the beliefs of the followers of these denominations. First, on the sacraments. For Lutherans, there's two or three sacraments. Baptism, communion or Eucharist, which they may call the divine service, and the third is confession or holy absolution, typically done in private with the pastor. Not all Lutheran denominations today observe this sacrament. Lutherans baptize infants as well as unbaptized adults. Some denominations use primarily pouring and others sprinkling, though immersion baptism is also acceptable. They believe that baptism saves. They also teach that Christ is truly present in the Eucharist. The bread is united with Christ's body and the wine with his blood so that both the original substances and the body and blood of Christ are consumed. This view is called sacramental union. Reformed and Presbyterian churches hold to only two sacraments, baptism and communion. For baptism, like Lutherans, infants of church members are baptized, as well as adult converts who were never baptized. Sprinkling is a common mode, but pouring and immersion are also acceptable. As for the connection between baptism and salvation, it's trickier and more variant in the Reformed view. Not all who are baptized get saved. Those unbaptized are at no risk in their salvation because of it. However, the sacrament does bring the infant into the covenant community of the church. It does confer grace, but the efficacy is not tied to the time the baptism is performed. The body and blood of Christ are said to be present in the elements of communion, but in a spiritual manner. Methodists have these same two sacraments, baptism and communion. Most Methodist denominations will baptize infants as well as adult converts, and sprinkling, pouring, and immersion are all used. Baptism is a means of justifying grace, but like the Reformed, it's not viewed as guaranteeing salvation or that you can't be saved without it. Most Methodist denominations affirm Christ is truly present in the sacrament, but the precise way of this is a mystery. For Baptists, normally the word sacrament is not used, but rather ordinance. Normally there are just two, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Baptism is for believers only, not infants, and it is only by immersion, not pouring or sprinkling. Baptism plays no part in salvation. The Lord's Supper is entirely symbolic also. The elements in no way become anything other than bread and grape juice. Some Baptists, like Primitive Baptists and Free Will Baptists, also practice a third ordinance of foot washing. Another difference between these denominations is what is called church polity, or in other 
other words, the way that churches are governed and connected together. Reformed churches have a Presbyterian polity. Commonly, local congregations have teaching elders and ruling elders, which together make a board of sorts called the church's session. Churches send delegates to a higher church court, perhaps called a presbytery or classis. These groups may be grouped into synods, and they may then be grouped into the general assembly. The exact structure and naming varies among denominations. Some Reformed churches, like Reformed Baptists and Congregationalists, have a congregational polity. Every church is independent and does not report to one higher up. They may or may not meet together in an association, which may meet in a convention, but if they do, the authority is only from the bottom up. These structures have no control over the local congregations. Within the congregations, the members normally have a high level of control over their own church's governance. Methodists often have connectional polity in which there are various districts containing local churches, which are part of conferences, and a general conference at the top. In some cases, ministers are in circuits within the conferences. If there are bishops, this is a form of episcopal polity, but not all Methodists have bishops. Those that do may have the bishops appoint ministers to local churches. Some Methodist denominations are congregational as well. Baptist churches are congregational in polity. The denominations or conventions Baptists are a part of can't force the churches to do anything. Local churches choose their own ministers and often make their own statements of faith. Lutherans sometimes have an Episcopal or modified Episcopal polity with bishops, and sometimes they're congregational. Before we talk more about the differences between these four denominational groups, I need to bring up the thing that really makes this so complicated, and that's the distinction between theological liberalism and theological conservatism. I know, big words to throw around in an overview video, but it's important. Theological conservatives believe that the Bible has no errors in it. They believe that the people mentioned in the Bible are literal people, and the events, including miracles, literally happened. Theological liberals are willing to entertain the idea that some of these events or people could be mythical, and they look to contemporary historians, biblical textual critics, and scientists for their views on the evidence, and if those views contradict the Bible in some areas, they are content to say that the Bible isn't literally true on those matters. Theological conservatives, then, are more restricted to a literal meaning of the Bible on things such as the roles of women in ministry, or when the Bible speaks on same-sex relationships, or when it lays down rules for divorce and remarriage. So you may have wondered, for example, which denominations allow gay marriage? Methodists? Reformed? Baptists? Lutherans? And the answer is, all of them, and none of them. Using American denominations as the example, there isn't just one Lutheran denomination. The largest Lutheran denomination is the ELCA, and it's quite theologically liberal. So there are plenty of congregations that are okay with gay marriage, for example, and many would consider characters in the Bible like Noah, Abraham, and Adam to be mythical. Meanwhile, the second largest denomination, the LCMS, is mostly theologically conservative, and so the Bible is without mistakes, and even if contemporary historians and paleontologists were to posit that the story of the Israelites being in Egypt wasn't true, the LCMS will teach that it did literally happen, because the Bible says so. And also taking the rest of scripture and trying to understand it to mean what it meant when it was written, they also conclude that marriage is only between one man and one woman, that women can't be pastors, and so forth. For Reformed, the PCUSA Presbyterian denomination is more theologically liberal, with many accepting gay marriage and viewing the Bible as having errors, and the PCA says the Bible is inerrant and doesn't allow gay marriage or women as pastors. For Baptists, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship is a liberal example, and the Southern Baptist Convention is a conservative one. Methodists are a bit different right now. The biggest U.S. denomination, the United Methodist Church, is currently splitting over this kind of stuff. The majority of U.S. leadership in the UMC is in favor of allowing churches to conduct gay marriages if they choose, though the denomination is currently officially opposed to it. And there are more conservative groups, too, like the Evangelical Methodist Church. So to answer what the denominational view is on gay marriage, for example, the answer is that many theologically liberal Lutherans, Methodists, Reformed, and Baptists accept it, but theological conservatives don't. And a theologically conservative Lutheran would often say that theological liberals aren't Lutheran at all. Baptists who are theologically conservative might say a theological liberal Baptist who accepts gay marriage is not really a Baptist. For this and many other major questions, the denominational label is less important than whether the group is theologically liberal or conservative. 
the theological liberals tend to get along with each other across denominational lines. As a result, theologically liberal Lutherans and Reformed churches have decided that some of the areas they disagreed on in the past aren't really a big deal anymore. Instead of arguing over things most Christians wouldn't understand, like whether Christ's death was a penal substitution, they say, let's focus on improving the world and fixing injustices in our societies. So let me draw out a few more differences between these denominations, but these differences are more strongly taught among the theologically conservative churches, while they are de-emphasized or sometimes not taught at all in the theologically liberal ones. On salvation, Baptists have historically taught that there is a salvation experience or conversion that needs to take place at a particular moment in one's life. A person who has not had this is unsaved, and those who do are saved. Baptists disagree on whether a person once saved can give that up and be in an unsaved condition. Again, Southern Baptists mostly say no, but Free Will Baptists and General Baptists tend to say yes. Methodists too teach this salvation experience, but believe that you can fall from grace after salvation and be unsaved again. Lutheran churches often dislike the view of salvation being a conversion experience. Salvation begins with baptism and is nurtured one's whole life. There's not necessarily any special experience, and because of this they would say a person who may be viewed as being saved could fall away from that and be lost. Reformed churches have varied. Some have been more Lutheran in that they don't emphasize a moment of saving faith, and others do. They also teach perseverance of the saints, that a person that God has chosen to salvation cannot forfeit it. That chosen to salvation thing is a distinctively Reformed viewpoint. Reformed theology teaches that God chooses who will be saved, and those will certainly be saved, and those not chosen will certainly not be. All people don't have the free ability to decide whether or not to accept Christ. Lutherans mostly agree with this, the main difference being a distinction between predestination, which they affirm, and something called double predestination, which they deny. Methodists deny that any person is unable to choose to believe on Jesus and be saved, and for Baptists, most believe that all people can freely choose to accept or reject Christ, but Reformed Baptists hold the Reformed position. Now, there are plenty of other differences we could draw out, but these are enough that if a person has an answer on five of the things we've covered, they could see which group they are closest to. Here, the views are laid out in a chart. For example, if you believe that God chooses some to be saved, you could be Lutheran, Reformed, or some Baptist. If you add to that that a person in a once-saved condition cannot fall away, then you're Reformed or possibly Baptist. And then if you say infant baptism is okay, then you're Reformed and not Baptist. Now, you ought to go find out which denominations have McDonald's-level dominance in the United States. Click over to my video on that or take a look at the rest of this channel. It's all about Christian denominations and what they believe.